Today we're talking about the five reasons why the INFJ seems too deep to others. INFJs have this internalized fear of showing up completely and authentically the way they are. Because more often than not, once we've shown up in a way that makes us feel something, that makes us feel complete, that makes us feel honest, we get a reaction that is not favorable. It's a reaction of you're too intense, you're too deep, you're too much, and this is not appropriate. I don't feel comfortable having those deep conversations with you. It's not that people necessarily tell you this, but you get it from their reaction. And then the INFJ is standing there baffled because they thought all I wanted to do is create a memorable moment for both of us. I just wanted us to feel something. I wanted us to experience something. What is so wrong about that? And so we continuously go out into the world hiding that aspect of us in hope that there's going to be one person who's going to not only accept it, but who's going to appreciate it. And so it's this continuous back and forth of should I, should I not? And why do people think I'm too deep? There has to be something wrong with me. I might not admit it openly, but there's still a part of me that still questions this and that still struggles with that part of my identity. So today we're going to look into the five reasons why the INFJ seems too deep to others and answer the question once and for all if this is really our problem, if we should finally accept this aspect of ourselves, or if we should learn that this is just not the right outlet. Before we get started, I want to remind you the next INFJ Epic Life Bootcamp Round launches May 4th. That's definitely the place where you can be as deep and as intense as you are. You can be authentically you and you're accepted there. We work on creating a amazing results in our lives and we do that as a community. So everything you need to know in order to join us on this amazing journey of our lives, you can find in the links in the description and sign up for the waiting list in order to get access to the early bird prize. Reason number one why the INFJ seems too deep to others is because we dislike superficiality. For a lot of people, this is a way of going through life. They are not questioning it. They don't wanna understand what's going on behind the facade. They don't go this far when it comes to questioning why people are saying certain things, why things are happening in a certain way. They're not looking behind the curtain. And that's just not who we are. And so we could pretend we are like this. We have learned to do this but it's just not us. And every single time you have to pretend like you're somebody that you're not, at some moment it will come out. It will come out that you actually want more of this conversation, that you want more of life. So every single time you meet somebody who does not need that aspect in their life, they're going to think you're too deep. And believe it or not, there are more people out there like this than you can imagine. The challenging aspect to this is that so many INFJs believe that it's their fault. I'm showing up in a way I shouldn't. And more than that, we think that the other person actually has more going on underneath, that they could tap into it. We're just too much in that moment. They want to go deeper, they can go deeper, they have a rich inner life. But guess what? A lot of people don't not in the way you have it. And I'm not even here saying that INFJs have a richer, better inner life. It's just different. So before you start questioning yourself, really assume that the way the person shows up is who they really are. If people show you who they are the first time, believe them. That's the one thing we as INFJs have to learn. Because remember, we see the world not the way it is, we see the world we are. And if we're people who are constantly thinking about what's going on behind the facade, what's going on behind the curtain, what are they actually thinking about? What are the reasons for saying certain things? We unconsciously believe that others are having those kind of thoughts as well. And if you step back from that and you see that a person who's talking to you on a more superficial level is really capable of that and they might go deeper in certain areas but not in the areas that you would want them to, then this is who they are. And once you accept that, you're not going to want to open up to them. That's the big thing. We as INFJs, we try to explain it better to people. We try to translate ourselves in a way that we could reach who they truly are. But what if who they truly are is what you're already seeing? If you understand this as an INFJ, you automatically don't wanna go deeper in that moment because you already know there's nothing to be gained here. 
So always ask yourself, if I'm going deeper with a person, then it's because I think there's more to reach there. And you can try it out once and you directly see from their reaction, this is going into a direction that I want or it's not. It gets painful for us INFJs if we don't get the reaction that we hope for and we think it's our fault and that we just have to explain ourselves better. That's not it. We dislike superficiality, some people like it, and you can find out as an INFJ rather quickly if that situation is going to lead you to a place where you can express yourself in the way you want and it will be received that way. Reason number two why the INFJ seems too deep to others is because we as INFJs feel deeply alive if we go deep, period. Think about it. We want to express ourselves. We want to go deep. We want to cross a boundary of what is socially accepted because it makes us feel something. We create emotions and there's nothing that makes us feel even more alive if we see that we have created an emotion that the other person can pick up, can see, and can appreciate. And that's one of the ways we express ourselves as INFJs. So of course we're going to go deep. We want that because there's so much to gain there. But if you understand that this is how our mind works, it's not how other people's minds work. They don't want to go deep because they don't get any benefit out of it. Most of the time it makes them anxious. It makes them uncomfortable. They don't know where to grasp. And so they don't want to go deep. So even if they appreciate you going deep, they cannot meet you there because it doesn't make them feel as good to go there the way it makes you feel good. And so once you understand that all of that is about you, so it's not about making that person feel seen. It's not so much about connecting with that person on a deep level. That is something that we want to do consciously, but subconsciously, it's something that makes us feel alive. And if we know that this is not something that will make other people feel alive, again, you will recognize this rather quickly, then you can really switch it off because you won't get the outcome that you're looking for. In order to feel alive, we need to have an audience. We need somebody to be able to see that. So what does that mean? Are we going to just, you know, bury it and not let anybody see this? I'm going to feel like something is missing in my life. Like my life will feel meaningless. It will feel helpless. It will feel so dale. It's actually the opposite that we should do, which is be as open and as vulnerable and as deep as you want constantly all the time. And when you do this, you are automatically will figure out the places where there is more to be gained there. But what do we INFJs do? We keep it under wraps because we think nobody can handle it. But then there's this one person that might be able to handle it. So it's this tiny outlet and then we let it all out and we go really deep. But if you go through life and you'd say, this is what makes me feel alive. And I might get an audience, I might not, but that's not on me. What is on me is to express myself as many times as I possibly can, the way I show up, the way I dress myself, the way I present myself, the kind of choices I make in my life, the way I live my life. I want to live it boldly. I want to live it intense and with depth because then I know I've done everything in my power to create that connection, to gift who I am to the world. And then you will see that there are going to be way more people who are going to have a connection with that. They might connect with you at a bigger distance because it's too much for them to be really close up to you, but that's okay. You will see how all of that will give you such a satisfaction. It will give you such a feeling of connection and being seen that you're not going to feel like you're keeping a lid on all of that emotion inside of you. And once it seems like there's this small opening, it all has to burst out. That's just not what's going to make us happy. So it really comes down to making a choice. Do I rather want to be disliked for who I am than to be liked for who I'm not? And we should always choose being disliked for who we are, because then there's always the chance that you're going to be liked for who you are. But if you show up in a way that isn't really you, that is just this dialed down version of you, no matter how much a person likes this version of you, you will never feel connected. You will never feel seen 
because it's not truly you. Reason number three, why the INFJ seems to deep to others is because we don't have enough outlets. So if you think about it, if we have all this emotion inside of us and we want to share something, we want to express ourselves in one way or another, mostly not in this extroverted way of I'm going to be on stage and talk to thousands of people. I'm probably not going to be the person with 30 friends and constantly there's going to be this exchange of emotion. That's not who we are as INFJs, but still it is part of our creative force expressing emotion, making people feel something, making people experience an atmosphere that we create. And we as INFJs have conditioned ourselves to such an extent that there's something wrong with that, that we don't find the outlets that will make us feel like, oh, I now feel like I've created this outlet that makes me get it all out. We as INFJs, in order to feel balance in our lives, we have to really lean into our extroverted side because otherwise we're going into that NITI loop and we start to overanalyze things and we start to overthink things. In order to feel balanced, in order to feel complete, there has to be some expression of what we're feeling. And it can be through art, it can be through the way you show up, it can be through the way you present yourself, what you say, what hobbies you pursue. It can be an outlet like a blog or you know a YouTube channel, it doesn't matter, but there has to be something that allows you to express who you are without the restrictions of that person is going to feel offended, that person is going to feel uncomfortable. Well, if you have an outlet like that, people will have the choice of does this make sense to me or not? They can decide that for themselves. Don't make that choice for them by directly saying, oh, they're not going to accept that. The only reason why we do this is because we have a person in mind. We have a person in mind and we think if I show up the way I want to, this is going to be uncomfortable for them. But if you're doing it in a vacuum, so to say, and you still put it out into the world, so somebody could theoretically experience that, then you're allowing people to make that choice for themselves without restricting who you really are. And if you do that, I promise you, you're not going to feel the urge to go so deep with the people you meet. It's just not there. Because if you are keeping it all inside, it will come out at any first chance that you think, oh, okay, this is now a possibility. I need to connect with that person. I need to get some kind of feedback of this is who I truly am. If you have an outlet, you have that constantly. It's like this big valve that gets opened and you get to express yourself and then you know, when you meet people, it's more like, oh, this is fit. This does not fit. I'm not in need of that kind of connection. If there's something there, great. If not, like I'm already doing great. Like I already feel like I'm creating my INFJ epic life. Reason number four, why the INFJ seems to deep to others is because we lean to expressing who we are and going deep with people who have a hard time with it. And I'm not talking about people who are superficial. I'm talking about people who actually need to go deeper in order to heal themselves. We as INFJs, we understand people rather quickly. We understand when somebody has an insecurity, when they show up with a facade, when there's something going on underneath that they haven't dealt with yet. And so there's always this need of, I actually want to go deep in order to heal that aspect of myself, but I'm afraid to. And those are the people we're most attracted to because the chance that that person will get a greater benefit of you going deep with them is just there. It's evident. I mean, think about it. Imagine you're able to connect with a person who has so much going on underneath, who feels like nobody can see that part of them because it's full of shame. And then you come along and you express yourself in a way of the way you truly are inside that is great. There's nothing shameful about it. That is the biggest motivation for us. There's so much to be gained there. So much emotion for us and so much value for the other person. So we're like a moth to a flame. This seems like the perfect situation. But guess what? If a person has that stuff going on within them and you connect with them on that level, it's too intense for them. There's so much fear of uncovering what's underneath that. This isn't something that people can just consciously choose. So many people will try to do everything in order to keep that part hidden 
from others and from themselves. And so, of course, you will seem too deep for them. Of course, they will run away. Although for you, it seems like that's what they have to do. Just because it's what they have to do in order to get to a better place, it doesn't mean that they're ready. And it also doesn't mean that if you explain yourself better, they will become ready. And so these are the kinds of people who are most likely are going to think that you're too deep. You're too much. This is too intense for me. Because if you would meet a person and you would go really deep with them and they have no emotional reaction to that, they would just think, oh, that person is just, you know, in their own head and they're living in the clouds and, you know, they're really all about poetry or romanticism or whatever they want to say. That has absolutely nothing to do with them. But the people who have a strong reaction, they most likely feel something in a place that they don't want to feel yet, that they're not able to look at because it's going to be painful. It's going to be uncomfortable. And so this is something that should just tell us that if a person isn't ready for that, if that is too much for them, then that's their prerogative. It doesn't mean that you can't go deep at all. It's just that we shouldn't wander afterwards. We shouldn't stay in that situation and ask ourselves what we did wrong or if we hurt that person or how we could have shown up in a different way. That's not for us to answer. So find a healthy outlet like we talked to. And if you still feel like there's something to be gained here from a deep conversation, go try it out. It's not illegal. It's not immoral. It's not like you're doing something with bad intentions. So a person can always choose, is this too much for me or not? And uh, that's on them. But don't feel like you have to explain yourself nor feel like you have to make that choice for them because they cannot handle it to begin with. Reason number five, why the INFJ seems to deep to others is because people can only meet you at the level they're at. Meaning if you are naturally always on a more subconscious level, you're connected to that subconscious, you talk on that level and you have a person who cannot do that, then they will not be able to meet you at that level either. Although you're going to see that part of them in them. You're going to see that subconscious part. You're going to see what is really going on within them and who you think they truly are. But think about it like this, just because there's something on our subconscious, it's a matter of definition of who a person truly is. If you think about it, isn't a person who they truly are, the person that they're able to be at that moment? So maybe subconsciously they could get to a level that they would be able to connect with you with. So maybe they could open up their subconscious and go through things and, you know, become the person that you want to reach. But who knows if they're ever going to be able to. Some people need to do ayahuasca. Other people might never reach this point. And it's not on us to make a decision for them of they should reach out into their subconscious, understand who they truly are so we can have this connection. As I said, some people will never get there. Most people won't ever get there. And it's our interpretation that they could be more than what we're currently seeing. See the person for who they are today. See them for how they show up and the actions they're portraying today. And when you do this, you might want to go deep and they might not able to reciprocate and whatever they want to decide about you, it's on them. And you're not going to even think about, oh, that person thinks I'm too deep. You're probably going to say, oh, that person is not interesting to me. And that's it. Do you know how many people have opinions about you that you don't even think twice about because they don't bother you? We get bothered by things that we feel are inadequate about us. So the more we come to terms with, well, that's what I like. That's what makes me feel alive. That's what makes me feel like I'm living an epic life and I'm not going to sacrifice that. I'm going to live it out all the way. You're going to see that a lot of things are going to change. You're not going to focus on the people who can reciprocate that, but actually find ways and outlets that allow you to be who you truly are. 
One of the ways to encourage all of this, to strengthen that voice of yours, is the INFJ Epic Life community. So join our next live round. We launch May 4th. You can sign up for the waiting list now to get access to the early bird prize. We notify you once we go live. Everything else you want to know, you can find in the links in the description. And if you want to watch another video now that is in alignment with today's topic, then check out the video you see on the screen right now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, guys.